Hey guys, for this special Wednesday episode, I thought I would break away from the normal programming of four episodes and instead give you a two hour special compilation with a good friend of mine, Zach Baby TV. This episode is part his encounters, part mine, and you might hear some new stories from him and some classics you might remember from me. Enjoy. This happened last summer. My wife and I are born and bred in Kansas. We've always been avid campers. Take it, yes, we do the whole RV thing, so some people don't consider that camping, but to us we do. Especially in our age, as we are in our late 50s. We both planned on retiring, and decided maybe it would be a good time to invest in a cabin in the area that we're used to camping at. There are some properties that are on Zillow for sale right now that are about two hours away from where we live, which is actually really close to the area where we enjoy camping on the summer times. So after checking out a few places, we finally decided on a place we wanted to call home. It was absolutely gorgeous. It was a cute little two bedroom, two bath. Mind you, we don't need a lot of space as it's just her and I as our kids are all full grown and moved out by now. Our first night was just as normal as any other night. After we moved all our things inside and started to unpack, it was pretty fun just organizing and putting things where we thought would look best in the new place. It was close to midnight from what I recall. My wife was already in bed asleep. I was still sipping on a cup of brandy and decided to have a cigarette outside on the porch. I remember it was an overly chilly night. It wasn't winter, but for some reason it was freaking cold out. And foggy too, the mist was just thicker than usual. As I leaned over the side rail, I just gazed into the beautiful wilderness in front of me. We owned about 25 acres and it was absolutely, well, absolutely secluded. But that's what we wanted. And like I said before, the mist was thick thicker than I'm used to seeing when we're out here. I was just gazing into the distance when I swore I saw these yellow amberish eyes glowing in the distance between the trees. It was pretty far out so I wasn't exactly sure what it was. It could have been just something, some type of reflection from the moonlight, but I couldn't really tell. But judging off its height, I couldn't decipher what it truly was. I remember just staring it down, squinting my eyes to see if I could see some type of a silhouette figure in the darkness. As soon as my eyes adjusted a little bit better, I noticed this figure was standing upwards like a man. Its silhouette was bulky. I couldn't tell its color, it was pitch black out, but it's ears were they weren't normal they seemed pointy like a canine somehow of course now this was kind of far away so i was pretty much guessing on everything i saw outside of the eyes glowing but i swore that's how it looked i couldn't move i was almost frozen in fear and curiosity all mixed together in one emotion that's when i heard it I heard the sound of its footsteps, I'm assuming. It was moving away, slowly. I only heard the sounds a couple of times, but I felt it more than anything. Whatever it was, was big, because I felt its vibrations of its stepping from my porch where I was standing on the wood. It never did make a sound which creeped me out even more. At least if it would have made some type of a sound, I may have been able to decipher its breed or what it was. The next morning, I grabbed my 38 snub nose and went outside to investigate during the daytime. Hell yeah, I'm not going out there in the night. I've seen my fair share of scary movies. I walked about 20 yards into the woods in the direction from the front porch, trying to remember exactly where I saw it in the darkness. After about 15 minutes of searching and circling the area, that 
that's when I found it. The large, four claw like scrape against the bark of this large tree. The scrape marks were at least six feet high and deep. These markings were fresh. Like last night fresh. I've never seen markings like this before, and I've been coming out here for the past 25 years. I don't know what it was, but I could clearly take a guess. Listen, there ain't nothing like living right on the edge of the Great Dismal Swamp over here in Camden County, Virginia. All sorts of strange sounds, sights, and what have you. My family and I have experienced a handful of spooky, unexplainable things that don't make sense. This has been going on since I was just a little kid. My daddy and I have seen beasts of the swamp come right up to our house and press their faces against the back window. Sometimes it's just one of them. Sometimes it's several of them. And they would case the house looking for spots to try and pry the doors open to get in. These creatures are dangerous. They look sort of like wolves. The faces are dark in color. These things walk on their hind legs, just like a person, and not a dog. They have short snouts and very human facial features, high jaw bones, human-like facial structures, and sunken in eyes that are very striking. The eyes, they have this unnatural orange glow to them, like something out of a horror movie. It's always scared us to death when these things show up. You can feel it. The first time I had an encounter was when I was a 10 year old little girl and I was lying in my bed, drifting off to sleep, or almost, when all of a sudden, my room got really dark. I had my blinds and curtains completely open and my head was against the wall right underneath my window. Something really big stood in front of my window to block the light coming through. And in that moment as a kid, I turned around, half curious and half scared, and saw the horror that stood on the other side of my window. It just stood there and watched me and gave me a small smirk and looked away. I was terrified. Those aren't the only other critters we got out here either because my daddy has seen what he called lizard men emerging out of the swamp waters nearby at night. Sometimes they're drawn toward the porch light at night, so we make sure to keep all outside lights off if we absolutely can. He don't like to take any chances. One time, one of these things walked right up to our car in our carport and hid in the dark. You can hear it making this clicking noise, and you could see the glowing eyes that it had. My daddy fired his gun, and it still didn't even move. Anything that isn't afraid of a gun is something to be feared. When I say the swamp is dangerous, I mean it. Animals that are not supposed to exist thrive out there, and when they don't have to worry about being found, they can just torment those who live near the home without ever worrying. I wanted to mention this before I ended the email. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, we'll find random dead animals all around outside the house. They look to be like they've just dropped dead mid-step. It's so weird. Animals that aren't even really common around here either. We found a dead coyote once by our carport that looked like it had just fallen over and died. No signs of any poison, struggle, nothing. We found a boxer dead too. A few cats, raccoons, all died the same way. My daddy thought they were getting into poison somewhere, but no one around here, nor any of us lay out poison that these things can get into. More answers than questions at this point. The worst is during the spring and fall, where at night, you can hear all sorts of awful noise. The swamp will get really quiet, and you'll start to hear either these loud dinosaur roars and screams. It sounds like something out of a movie, and it sounds big. Then other times, you'll hear this deep roar that sounds like it's coming from a huge wolf. No doubt it's the swamp creatures that paid me a visit when I was a little girl. The sounds are incredibly loud at night. Other neighbors swear they heard a car being smashed into a tree. 
Other neighbors claim they will sometimes hear things in their backyards and driveways. I know the folks around here are very cautious and even have spotlights all around to ward these things away. From our experience, the swamp creatures are drawn to the light, and we're not sure why. The swamp creatures are very intelligent and know how to find food without anybody noticing. Maybe this is why they come toward the light. Sorry for so many things that don't make sense. We are trying to make sense of it ourselves. All we know is we have a swamp full of critters, like lizard men, and giant dogs that walk on their hind legs. We don't know what to do. In Colorado, there are many, many animals, from large to small, especially rabbits, that have a litter of bunnies every 90 days. Their population never seems to fail. In fact, it's growing. My buddy and I both worked for the state and investigating complaints from different counties. There was numerous complaints about finding dead rabbits with no heads in this particular small town. They'd be finding their bodies, but with their heads missing. So, after a while setting up our little trap, hanging out in the pine trees like the deer hunters used to do, as we waited for the kill to take place. Sure enough, as it grew darker through the mist and only the moon for light, the rabbits all came out to eat. And almost immediately, I swore, I heard the sound of a wolf howling. It sounded close. As soon as we heard it, I swear it's like time stopped. All the bunnies that were out in front of us just stood up on their hind legs and froze in fright, listening and waiting. This large, blackish, wolf-like creature just came out and attacked these bunnies. It happened so quickly, I would have missed it if I would have blinked, but I couldn't. This thing was ripping the heads off of them, one by one, and collecting them like some sort of trophy, and left the bodies there, and darted off into the woods. It wasn't killing for survival. It was killing for sport. It just didn't make any sense. First of all, this was the biggest wolf I have ever seen in my life, and we've been investigating and taking care of things in the wild for many, many years. This thing was abnormally large and fast. Why was it even worrying about little rabbits to begin with? And why was it only taking the heads? That makes no sense. We assumed that it was taking the heads back to its den, we supposed, so that was next in our investigation, to find its lair. After a while of investigating, we found what we thought was a den under a rocky ledge. What a surprise. At the main entrance, we saw rabbit heads hanging from the upper ledge. As we continued to walk slowly inside of its den, we had a couple of mini flashlights with us, just in case that we had standard on our belts. We saw a couple of short wolf-like creatures walking around on their back two legs like humans, snarling and growling and even lightly howling. It was weird. I couldn't believe what I was seeing with my eyes. These canines were walking upright like us. They were only about four and a half feet tall standing on their back hind legs, but still, canines don't do that. We crept a little closer as they were roasting something over their fire. There were only three of them, but to our surprise, there was a woman and a small child in the back of the cave kneeled down against the wall near the table. Were they going to be roasted? With only our handguns on us, we planned to rescue them. I shot one straight in the neck, and my buddy shot one that aimed right through its chest. The third one took off and got away, leaving his two companions bleeding out on the cave's floor. Buddy went over to the woman and child and undangled their ropes. As I glanced down at the two figures on the floor, their bodies started to shapeshift back into a 
human form. The woman and child walked over, and she recognized the faces and the bodies. She said they were their elderly neighbors. I believe my friends and I had an encounter with a werewolf, or some sort of werewolf entity. For the record, I'm a 17 year old kid, and because of COVID, a lot of my friends and I were left with nothing to do. We were avid watchers of ghost hunters and paranormal investigations, and decided it would be a good idea to do our own EVP session out in one of our oldest cemeteries in town. So, we waited one night till around midnight where the four of us can sneak out and go. We get there about midnight, and the cemetery has graves that date back to the early 1800s. It's not very large, but it holds about 70 graves, if I had to take a wild guess. There's a lot of trees and coverage, especially now that spring has come, and everything has grown in. The cemetery has your typical black spiral fencing around, but beyond that is heavy trees and forest, so you can't just walk by on the street and look in. It might even be privately owned, so technically, we were actually probably breaking and entering. Oh well. There's a couple of mausoleums on the far side that I believe were owned by some of the original families here. We found a large gravestone that was sitting by this large dead tree, and thought it would be the perfect place and time to sit down and do our session. We begin our EVP session asking some simple questions. Being summertime, everything around us was quiet, but I've never been to a graveyard at night, so I was already on edge. In my head, I was thinking crickets should be making noise, but they weren't. My friend kept saying that he felt the energy change around us, and we were invoking the wrong spirits. I thought he was just pulling my chain, because I had not felt a thing, and I'm sitting right next to him. Then, we heard a noise, maybe 50 feet away, behind a couple of the other graves that sounded like rustling, and leaves crunching. At this point, my friend is freaking out, and thinking demons are going to come and take us. Oh, I should also mention that we only have our phone flashlights, for whatever reason. Why we decided not to grab our flashlights at home, I don't know. Maybe we were far too excited. It was a heavily cloud-covered night, lots of overcast, so there was no light from the moon. We continued our session and asked a few more questions with my friend while he is shaking. He interrupts me mid-question, says he thinks there's something over there watching us and points. I said, you're just paranoid, so I shined the flashlight over there, and all of us at the same time we see these tiny red orbs and these tall pointed ears coming from out behind a really large family tombstone, about 40 feet away. My friend jolts suddenly, saying, What is that thing? Is that a demon? I kept my ground and stood still, and I whispered in his ear, Let's get out of here, really slowly. Where's my other two friends were huddled right behind me. We all stood up slowly and backed away to the far side of the cemetery, where this thing continued to watch us and not move from beyond the gravestone. Due to its location, we were actually backing up away from the entrance and we needed to find a way to kind of slyly get around. So we hid behind a couple of tombstones and each of us took turns making a beeline for the entrance. We did this one at a time without this thing ever seeing us, or so we'd like to think. That's the only and last time I'm ever doing an EVP session in a graveyard, and it's kind of killed my desire to do any ghost hunting or paranormal investigation. Since we saw the tops of its ears and its eyes, it looked like your typical werewolf. My friend, the one who was freaked, is convinced we summoned a demon and refuses to talk about it, but honestly, I don't exactly know what happened. I believe we saw something and potentially a werewolf spirit, or maybe a werewolf, even though I can't exactly say that's what it was. I haven't told my parents or any of my other friends about what happened, so I'm desperately looking online for answers and people I can talk to about it. 
We were actually planning on bringing out a Ouija board out there, but with the way the events transpired, boy, I'm glad we didn't. Who knows what else would have happened. Part of me wonders if us trying to do an EVP session called this thing in, or if it just happened to be lingering around nearby and saw us and took its chance to watch us and be curious. I've looked online a little bit, and I have seen some similarities between people seeing werewolves in graveyards, but it seems to be mainly Indian burial grounds is the common denominator. I don't know my geography terribly great, but I'm pretty sure there aren't any native reservations or anything around here, so that's checked off the list. Had we not spotted it, who knows if it was truly trying to creep closer and maybe grab one of us. I don't feel like it had the best intentions considering it was hiding and trying to stay incognito. At the same time though, it did reveal half its face and upper head to watch us from afar. I felt it was more curious, but my feelings could very well be wrong. After all, I felt that nothing would happen, so I was wrong there. Maybe it was waiting for the right time to grab one of us, like I said. I'm just glad we didn't stick around to find out. Somehow, when we made our exit out of the graveyard, hugging the outer perimeter wall, we didn't see it anymore, which was equally frightening. I don't know where it went. Maybe it was there guarding someone's grave. Maybe it was someone's pet. I don't know. People say there's a certain kind of energy that lingers around old graveyards, but whether that's true or false, I can't exactly say. I didn't initially feel anything different about the atmosphere around us when we first entered, nor did I really when we left. I was just seeing this creature. I never felt a sensation of anything wrong, per se. Anyway, I'm not here to turn this into a novella. I just have no desire to ever return to a graveyard to do any sort of EVP session at nighttime again. I would have gone during the day, and it might have been a different scenario. I'll never know now because I am staying far away. Thanks for reading. This happened last weekend. We are currently on quarantine, as the, you know, whole coronavirus thing is still happening. Anyways. We were having a double date with our neighbors downstairs. They live at the bottom edge corner of our apartment complex. We usually spend most of the night watching scary movies in the living room. Drinking mixed drinks, beers, snacks like those fancy meats and cheeses with crackers. And usually we have a feast with the barbecue. Unfortunately, we're only allowed to have those electric barbecues out front, but hey, it's better than nothing. And to be quite honest, it's actually pretty darn good for something that's not charcoal or propane. It works. Fast forward to about, I want to say about 11 o'clock p.m. or somewhere around that time frame. We're probably into our third scary movie at this point, as we pretty much binge the whole day starting around 2 or 3 p.m. Take a few breaks here and there, but yeah, it was pretty late. We had the front door open, just allow some fresh air in. Like I said, they live on the corner edge. What we heard was abnormal to this day. Now, in Southern California, where we currently reside, we're pretty fond to coyotes. They're everywhere over here, so we're kind of keen to how they sound, right? Well, not that night. We were all watching The Conjuring Chapter 2, which is one of my favorites, by the way, when we all heard this gruesome howl coming from outside our door somewhere in the wilderness nearby. It sounded off. It wasn't a coyote. I know what a coyote sounds like. It was so loud. It must have been somewhere within our premises, or at least at the edging by the gates. It interrupted our film, and we don't watch our movies with a low volume. When we first heard it, I glanced at my wife, and she was stunned. I looked at my buddy Ray and his wife, and they just kind of shrugged it off at first. You know, we had some drinks in us, so we were like, <laughs> somebody got some tasty bunnies tonight. And we just continued watching our film. And I swear, within 30 seconds, the howling 
came again, but this time, much deeper. I got up from the couch and walked towards the door. I looked through the screen to see if I could see anything outside. Of course, it's kind of hard when you have a metal screen in your face. So I slowly unlocked it. I opened it slowly and stepped outside. It took about a minute or so for my eyes to adjust. I kept glancing left and right. At first, I saw nothing. I almost shrugged it off, just thinking it was just some coyotes just scavenging some food for the night. When I saw the eyes out in the distance in the brush by the woods, the glowing amber eyes staring back right at me. I don't know if they were truly amber or just a reflection from the moon above. It didn't matter. Whatever was looking back at me was no coyote. This thing was much too tall. I was stuck there frozen in shock and fear all mixed in the same emotion. I couldn't even signal for them to come behind me to check it out. I was just paralyzed in curiosity. I finally darted my head back to tell them to come outside and check it out. When I turned back around to face the wood line, the eyes were gone, completely vanished. All that stood in front of me was pure darkness in the woods, nothing more, nothing less. I told everyone what I had seen. They kind of believed me, but they kind of didn't, if that makes any sense as they couldn't fully deny my theory because we all heard the howling from inside. I know what I saw. And like I said, that was no coyote. I grew up in California. In my 20s, I moved out to a place in rural Idaho where my girlfriend's family lived. I only lived out there with her and them for about six years before her and I split up. Actually, it was a really rough breakup, and when people always talk about the one that got away, well, that was her. However, I'm not here to bore you with lost romance. I wanted to write to you because of the things that I saw while I lived with her family and her during that time. To protect her family, because I still respect and built those relationships, I'm gonna keep where they lived privately I can tell you it was southern Idaho, and it was a very, very rural area. The Snake River wasn't extremely far away. There's some hints. Now, nearby where her parents lived was a medium-sized farm. Maybe not even a farm, but I know for certain that they raised livestock. I can't remember if I saw many cows, but I do remember seeing a ton of goats and pigs, so who knows what kind of operation they were running. Never saw the people, nor did I meet them. This is relevant and important at the time. I was working at security at this nearby company, doing the night shift gig. Sometimes I wouldn't be there till 11 p.m. Other nights it was 2 a.m. My schedule varied on and off. There were a couple of nights that I remember seeing this tall, super skinny dog walking on two legs coming out of this old fence from that farm with a dead pig or goat in its arms. It creeped me right out. The first time I only ever saw it from the back when my headlights hit it. As soon as they did, it took off even faster into the woods nearby, but I saw the dead pig it was carrying. First time I said a few choice words, and I didn't know what kind of animal it was. It sure was freaky looking. I don't know what kind of animals lived out here. I don't think I ever really once thought about werewolves or Bigfoot or any of that. I didn't believe in that stuff. I'm also not a country boy, so the wild is an unknown area for me. I just stick to what I know. And I tell you, I have never seen such a slender dog-like animal walking on two legs like that. It was also very tall. The first thing I noticed was the cropped ears. For the first second, it honestly looked like how a dog does when it stands up and puts its two front paws on you. 
same tapered waist and hawks like a dog. But this thing was walking and then running on two legs, like it was comfortable doing so. It strongly resembled a German Shepherd from behind, but it was a dark brown color, just from what I saw. The second time I saw it was shortly after the first, and it was facing me this time, going towards the area that I saw it last time. This time it was also empty-handed. That's when I saw it from the front, and when I say freaky looking, I mean freaky looking. It was very lanky, skinny, but didn't look starving. Also not very muscular at all either, but fairly lean. It had extremely long arms and legs and a very unnaturally large head. It was again walking on two legs. I never once thought werewolf because it didn't resemble a werewolf or anything that I'd ever seen. Just a freak of nature. My head spun around again when my headlights hit it. I immediately recognized it as the creature that I had seen previously. It had a very angry, pissed off look on its face. Its face was stuck in a snarl position, revealing its massive canine fangs that were protruding down like a saber-toothed cat. Didn't get to look at the face much, because my lights were only on it for a few seconds as I passed by, and it paid no attention to me or my vehicle. It was clearly on a mission to get to wherever it was going. It was walking just like a man though. Super freaky like I said. Gave me the creeps. I didn't see it again after that for a while. Not until the following summer where I was still working the same job and the same varied schedule. I saw it a few more times that same year. All throughout the summer and fall. I never saw it facing me like I did that one time. But it was without a doubt the same animal. There's no mistaking it. Nothing looks like that animal did, nor as tall or walks on two legs like that. Each time I saw it, the thing either had a dead pig in its arms or a dead goat. One time, it had a goat's body with no head, and there was dried blood all over. I wouldn't see it every night, but just here and there. It really freaked me out enough that eventually, I would start to think about it and hope not to see it again. I worked security at that job for a total of two years and then got a different job with a totally different company on the opposite side of town, resulting in me never driving around that road again. I never told my girlfriend at the time or her family about what I saw during my time there as a security guy. I spent some time years back in my small travel trailer being out on the road, enjoying seclusion away from people and things. Since I primarily work from home, and only really need the internet a couple of days a week. I spent most of my time in the middle of nowhere, enjoying the solace of the wilderness around me. At night, I would start fires, have a beer or two, and crash out in my small bed in my trailer. Because of the experiences I had, on two separate occasions, I've certainly slowed down on my camp rendezvousing for the time being, and just learned to settle with a piece of property to call my own. Thankfully, I have not dealt with anything as I did in my trailer here which is nice. On two separate occasions, I was parked at different national parks, one in Oklahoma, the other in Kansas. Both times I heard the same really low rumbling noise, it was like a growling outside of my trailer late at night. My trailer is very small, so there ain't much to protect me if say a bear wanted to come and charge me and eat my face off. I didn't have any real forms of protection on me either, other than a large hunting knife. Not near enough to ward away any serious predator or threat. Stupid me, I know. These little rumblings would grow in volume and then decrease in volume over and over. The intervals were random and they'd be going on all throughout the night all around my trailer. It sounded like a big wolf, but it was also so loud and powerful that you could feel the bass vibrations through your body. Whatever was making those growling sounds had to possess a massive set of lungs on them and be far larger than any bear. It made me get out of there real fast. The second time it happened, I didn't waste any time. I heard that same growling noise in the middle of the night and man, I got up out of my sleeping bag and just ripped it out right out of there. I don't know what kind of animal it came from, and frankly, I didn't care long enough to stick around. What I do know 
is that of all the animals it could have been, a bear and mountain lion do not exhibit those behaviors like that. The first night, this animal stuck around most of the night and circled my trailer. I'm certain wolves don't even behave this way. Besides, it was so large, the only thing I could think of that would have given it justice would have been a bear. Again, bears don't behave like this either. The energy I felt was extremely hostile, as if I had encroached on this thing's home. If you're ever out touring the wild or national parks of states, be careful where you park your camper for the night. There are things that you don't want to encounter in the dark. This story involves a bit of tragedy, so I'll just come out and say it. First, I was never close at all with my grandfather. He was a very wicked man to me and my family growing up. Extremely cold, so we never had a close relationship. He was extremely verbally and physically abusive to my mother growing up, so again, no real relationship ties or anything there. Just this last month, we were alerted by another family member that a wild dog broke into his house and he apparently died of a heart attack. When police showed up at the house, there was definitive signs and evidence to support the break-in of a large unknown animal. Everything pointed to a canine. My grandfather was found on the living room floor, dead. He had died with a horrified expression on his face and it was later revealed that he passed away from cardiac arrest. A family member found him and called the police and they investigated. My family and I didn't find any of this out till recently when the family member who discovered him called us to tell us personally. He lives in an entirely different state. So again, we have no real ties with him, nor have we seen him in some time. I do know that he lives alone in a small house with no neighbors. I don't know where he lives geographically speaking, but I know it's not in town. Anyway, this family member told us that whatever broke in broke down the side to his house, the back door, I guess, into the kitchen. It had been ripped off or broken off entirely off its hinges, and large muddied canine-like tracks and marks were all over the kitchen and floor. Whatever dog or animal this was never touched any portion of the house besides the kitchen and dining room areas. It also never touched my grandfather or touched him when he was deceased. While my family who was close with him is dealing with the mourning, the thoughts of a dogman being the only one responsible is the thing that's really sending chills down my spine and haunting my thoughts. I'm obsessed with cryptids and channels like yours, so as soon as this happened, I wanted to get your opinion on what you think. The family member who told us called my mother and told her, and then she relayed the info to me None of my family knows or really believes in any of that stuff, but when I was told all of this, it rang a huge bell, a huge red flag. It screams Dogman. I believe a dogman killed him, broke into his house, and scared him so bad he had a heart attack. I've listened to plenty of Vic Hundiff's Dogman encounters, and yours, so I know a dogman encounter when I hear one. I'm still trying to register the craziness of this, I never thought it would happen to my family out of everybody. I'm almost certain this was dogman related. I mean really, what large canine like animal breaks into a house with as much force as this did and not attack my grandfather? What kind of canine rips the back door off a house completely off its hinges? There's no bear, no wolf, no animal that can possess that kind of human like intelligence or strength. Maybe as time goes on, I can get some more answers for you, but for now, I can at least relay this info to you. Wish me luck as I go and dig for what else more I can find. I'll let you know when I do. I live in eastern Tennessee. This happened last year. I don't really like to talk about it, but I figured maybe if I got it off my chest, Maybe I would meet fellow man who came across some similar situations such as my own, and maybe some people out there would actually believe my story. So here it goes. I was on an overnight fishing trip with my brother-in-law. We have one of those small boats around the lake that we live close by. Fishing and hunting, that's, that's what we do. 
The first few hours were perfectly normal. We were just chillaxing on the boat, fishing. You know, it was a pretty good night too. We only went a little bit out towards the edge. We didn't go too deep, it was really not necessary. That's when we started hearing something in the brush, right at the wood line by the edge of the water. At first I thought it was barking, but it was more like growling somewhat. We just both sat there on the boat and listened. I told my brother-in-law, maybe that's our cue that we should just start heading back. I mean, we had plenty of fish, and we had a fair share of a few beers, so we had a pretty good night. No reason to stay out here and get spooked for nothing. Or maybe it was something. Maybe it was a bear, or a coyote, or a mountain lion. I mean, hell, it could be a number of things out here in the wild. And I'm not risking it. Nope. I got a little girl at home. So we got our casts back into the boat. I turned on the engine and we slowly started heading back towards the dock. Once we arrived, I tied everything up and we started to unload the boat. That's when we heard the howls. Now, we're not experts, but we're definitely fond to the area. That was no coyote. That's when I heard the branches being snapped in the distance. Something was coming fast. My brother-in-law is not from this area. He was frozen in fright. He didn't know what to do. Hell, I didn't know what to do. This thing could be anywhere. I did the only rational thing that I could think of. I grabbed my 38 from my bag, lifted it into the sky, and let out one shot. <laughs> then, I started howling and barking like a loud dog, as loud as I could. I even told my brother-in-law to start barking like a dog too. And I swear, within seconds, the branch snapping noises had ceased. It had completely stopped. I looked all around, pistol handy, ready for whatever was going to happen. It is what it is at this point. It's survival of the fittest. And worse comes a shove, we could always just get back on the boat. I swear we stood there for at least five minutes before we took a step. Nothing. Eventually, we power walked back to my truck, threw everything in the bed, hopped inside, and peeled the hell out of there. To this day, we couldn't truly identify what the hell we heard that night. I've been a hunter for all my life. My brother-in-law has no freaking clue. He's just a city boy. I still don't know to this day. But I could definitely take a wild guess. I won't lie to you. I've been homeless. It's not something that people brag about nor like to reveal, but it's true. I had lost my job, and I'm living out of state, so I had nowhere to really go to. I didn't really do shelters. I mean, they're just temporary anyways. There's no long-term help there. I would just use them for a quick meal and a shower, to be honest. I had saved enough money to purchase a small tent, and some blankets that I had left over from where I found in some dumpsters nearby. I found this nice little wooded area that was kind of close to the shelter. I want to say it was about maybe about a quarter of a mile away. Not too bad. It was a secluded area as I do live in a small town. I did have some nice clothing that was still in a luggage bag. I would apply for jobs on Craigslist. I knew it was just a matter of time before I got back on my feet and I figured why try to save money for some hotel when I could just camp out for a couple weeks and shit. I'll get on my feet in no time. A couple weeks had passed by, and I had a job interview in a couple days. 
I was eating a few of those frozen burritos that you could get at the 99 cent store. Luckily, the shelter had a microwave, so I just heated up my food and took it back to my camp. I don't really associate with anybody else at this shelter. Like I said, I'll be on my feet in no time. Periodically, I like to make a little fire right in front of my tent just to keep the dogs away. And anything else for that matter. I never allow the fire to get too large. I don't want to cause any attention to myself to the outside world. I'm not supposed to be out here, but I gotta keep warm too, you know. I was just about ready to call it a night and get inside my tent. When I heard it. When I heard the growling of something in the woods with me. What the hell is that? That's no dog. That's no coyote. That's... That's nothing I've ever heard before. And it sounded pretty damn close. I don't have any forms of protection other than a big stick that I found along the way. I have no gun. I have no knife. Hell, I don't even have a spoon. I have nothing. I just sat there in total fright. So, I gathered a few more twigs nearby and a couple branches that were good sized and threw them into the fire. I wanted to make this fire just a little bit bigger and hopefully it'll last a little bit longer. Maybe it'll scare off whatever it is that's close by. I waited a few more minutes and I heard nothing. So I just brushed it off and went inside my tent for the night. I was just about to doze off. I was just sitting there tossing and turning for a while thinking about what the hell I heard outside. Right when I was about to fall asleep, I swear. I heard and I felt the vibration of something big walking nearby. I don't know anything that could make that kind of sound. At least not something that belongs in a zoo. It seemed like it was getting closer because it felt stronger with each step. Then, whatever it was outside stopped because I could no longer hear or feel the vibrations. Was it gone? Or was it here? My heart was beating so hard, I swear it was gonna bust out of my rib cage. I just sat there in total fright, too darn afraid to even try to open that zipper to peek outside. I started to talk to myself softly, trying to calm myself down. Okay, James. Don't freak out. Calm down. Relax. Woosa. Woosa. It's only a dog. It's only a wild dog. That's that's all it is. You're in the woods. These things happen. Relax. Don't think too much of it. Calm down. Relax. I must have fallen asleep. Because when I woke up, I could see the sunbeams trying to break through the fabric of my tent. I rubbed my eyes and sat up, still half alert as to what happened last night, still in total confusion. I got a job, and eventually got back on my feet. That night definitely motivated me better than anything else or anyone else ever could have. To this day, I don't know what it was, and I doubt I ever will. They call me Gambezi. I live in Chattown, Tennessee. If you don't know where that is, look it up on a map. I'm a barber, see, and I was working one late night. I want to say it was around 7 p.m., about the time we usually close up at the shop. 
the sun had long set and it was pitch black outside. I was just wrapping things up on a bald fade I was doing on my cousin. Chat Town is a city, but it's still country if that makes any sense. There's a lot of rural areas out here and plenty of trees, woods, you name it. Wildlife is common out here. So there we were. Just me and my cousin. Everybody else had already packed up and left for the night. It was a Friday night, if I recall correctly. It was cold out that night. After my cousin had paid me, and I gave him some shit because he's a lousy tipper, I locked everything up and made my way to my car. I actually liked the park across the street into the woodline area by the park. I don't like parking next to the building just because I would rather save those spots for customers. So, I'm walking towards the parking lot, which is at the park area where the wood line is to the woods. I don't know how deep those woods go, I never really ventured off into the woods, but there's woods everywhere. Hell, it's Tennessee. And yes, I'm a California transplant, I'm not originally from Tennessee. I came over here a few years ago because I'm a Christian and I believe in being able to fly the American flag without offending people. That's just one of many reasons why I moved out east. Anyways, back to the story. As I was starting to approach my car, I heard this ruffling sound in the woods right in front of me. Literally, I want to say at least maybe about 20 yards in front of me. I saw movement in the brush. I stopped with my keys in my hand. I kept my keys in between my fingers, just like Wolverine, to give a better example, just in case if it was someone trying to rob me or something. I mean, it was already laid out, as I mentioned before. You just never know. Or it could have been some homeless people. Druggies. Who knows? Yes, I was frightened, but still tried to keep calm. I was pretty close to my car, but I wasn't there yet. I just stared into the wood line in front of me, the tall grass swaying from the heavy wind coming from the west. Then suddenly feeling a slight chill tingled on the back of my spine when I heard it. It was the growling of something. There was no way I could truly identify it because I couldn't truly see it. I've had my fair shares of run-ins with the wildlife out here, but nothing sounded like this before. And that's when I saw its eyes. Its glowing amber eyes staring directly at me, right across from me to my left in the wood line. Whatever it was, was just as black as the night, or I would have seen some kind of color. But its eyes, those evil looking eyes I swear to you I've never seen anything like it before even on movies there is something very demonic looking about those eyes it felt like at least a minute but realistically it was probably only about 10 seconds of a stare down I kept jingling my keys frantically trying to figure out which one was correct for my old ass car I eventually got it open and I hopped inside. Once I turned the ignition on, I turned on my high beams quickly. It beamed right at this thing, just quick enough for me to get a glimpse at it before it darted off into the darkness. It was bigger than I thought. It was pitch black as I assumed it would be, but it, it looked like a big dog. But it was standing like, like a man. And its eyes, its eyes were glowing. God help us. This happened to me when I was a kid. I can barely remember all the details, but I do recall a lot of what happened that night. My name is Josh, I'm 25 years old, but when this happened, I was barely 8. To this day, nobody believes me, other than my friend Bill, he believed me. I grew up in rural Pennsylvania, 
needless to say my backyard was quite a few acres. In other words, there were some serious woods that were still considered our property. My dad built this treehouse for me, and to this day it still stands. Yet I'm not quite sure as it's been a few years since I've returned home to visit, and for good reason. This happened to me on Halloween night. I know, cliche, right? But it really did happen on Halloween. Me and Bill and a couple other of our friends in the neighborhood finished up trick-or-treating. I didn't want to return home, so everybody just followed me through the shortcut to the treehouse. I mean, it was kind of all of ours in a way, but it just happened to be on my property. And plus, my dad built it, so it was mine. It was kind of like a club for us. I don't think we ever did come up with a name. We didn't really return to that treehouse after that night. We were all hanging out, eating candy, and just, you know, just telling jokes and doing what kids do. It was probably about 10 p.m. when eventually everybody started to leave the head back home. I stayed up there because that was my property. I wasn't really too concerned about rushing home. They pretty much knew where I was. They could pretty much see the light from the treehouse from the back porch. But what they didn't see is what's concerning. I was wrapping things up with my candy, what was left over at least, and I was hanging over the side, just looking at the grass as I swore I heard something. I was shining my flashlight down below. And that's when I saw it. This thing darted across right by me in the bushes. I don't know what it was. It was so fast, it, it was like a blink of an eye. Whoa! I took a few steps back and leaned my back against the back of the tree in the center of the treehouse. What the hell was that? I slowly started to approach the edge again. But right before I leaned over to look out once more, that's when I felt it. I had to grip my hands on the edges so tightly before falling and losing my balance. Whatever that thing was, had came back. It sounded like it thrusted itself against the tree or, or hit it real hard, trying to knock me out of the treehouse or knock the whole treehouse down for that matter. Whatever that thing was, was incredibly strong. I barely had the balls to even look over the edge to see what the hell it was. When I finally did, I didn't see anything down below. I was too scared to make a sound. I just stood there petrified, shaking in my sneakers. Eventually, I got the guts to head downstairs. As I climbed down the wooden platform, I stopped in my tracks out of fright. That's when I saw the huge slash mark in the bark of the tree ripping off one of the steps from my treehouse. The slashes took a huge chunk out of the bark. That and the slashes themselves were at least three inches deep. I have no idea what it was. But that's when I heard the howls. I was busy doing dishes late one night when I happened to glance at my window right above my kitchen sink. I had to adjust my eyes and squint at first because I wasn't exactly sure what I was seeing. Once I was able to make out what it was, the sight before me was truly terrifying and frightening. I thought it was a man at first, except he looked like a dog, had a long snout and pointed ears. They reminded me of a German Shepherd's ears, and I had a hard time understanding what I was looking at. But then, my eyes continued to observe the rest of its body. It had a torso like a man, with human looking arms and legs. This thing was covered in hair or fur all over its body, and it appeared to be a dark brown or black color. 
It was one leg, stepping over our old wooden fence with what appeared to be a dead cat in its arm. As soon as it lifts its leg over the fence, it quickly turned its head back toward the direction it was coming from, as if to make sure it wasn't being seen. I got goosebumps. Bad. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. As soon as it lifted its leg over the fence, it quickly lifted up the other leg and was gone in a flash. I threw the dishes down and ran to go wake up my wife to let her know what I had seen. She said to me in a groggy state that I shouldn't stay up late anymore and do dishes because clearly I was seeing things. I still don't quite understand what it is that I saw, even though my wife doesn't believe me. I've looked on Google to see if I can find any images close to what I saw, and I guess it's a Rougarou. I believe that is French for werewolf, although I'm pretty sure that werewolves are fictional. But I can't deny what I saw that night, so I really don't know what it was. It was so scary, and so human-like. The only dog-like thing about it was that it was covered in fur, and that it had a large head of a dog. I'm convinced that I saw a wolfman of some kind. I'm just thankful that it never turned back and looked at me. If it wasn't for the full moon shining at the right place during the right time, and having virtually no clouds, and having not looked up when I did, I would have never ever known it was there. It was maybe only 30 to 40 feet away from the window. I used to live in a neighborhood in eastern Pennsylvania for about 12 and a half years. Pennsylvania is the witchcraft capital of the world, so all sorts of freaky stuff goes on. For the record, this neighborhood was a little bit smaller. We all kind of knew each other. I lived in that neighborhood on and off for 12 years, but we had what we'd like to call the neighborhood creeper. We all kept tabs on what this thing was, but we believe it was some sort of monster. Look, I know that sounds silly coming right off the bat, but let me explain. This creature would steal our cats and dogs, and it tried to break into our houses. Only sometimes, though. It wasn't around all the time, and there never seemed to be a rhyme or reason for it showing up. But it was primarily active during the early morning hours and at nighttime. It would come and go, no matter what season or month. Unfortunately, I got the chance to see this thing nearly face to face through my window. It had a very scary wolf-like face, pointed ears, and very human-like hands, but they were pressed up against the glass, so I couldn't see them as much as I would want to, or not want to. Judging by the size of this animal, it could have very easily just pushed my window through and gotten to me, but it didn't. It was like it was reminding me that I was its prey and it wanted to keep me in my cage until it was ready to feast. I know deep down that this thing could catch me and put me out of my house and eat me if it wanted to. There is a very old sweet lady that lived just a few houses down from me. God rest her soul. She passed away a few years before I moved out, but she described it as looking like a werewolf. She said it was black and gray in color and had very large teeth. She said it would always steal her cats and eat them, she was one of those elderly ladies that kind of let it go with having cats. I mean, her cats were always having kittens and having more and more kittens. She never really took care of them, and it really got out of hand. I guess you can say she was the crazy old cat lady, but she wasn't a crazy lady, she was actually a very sweet loving lady. Anyway, maybe that's one of the reasons why this thing came around. There was free food supply. I'm not exactly sure. Most people in the neighborhood were terrified from what I recall, and nobody tried shooting at it or calling the cops because, come on, what are they going to do? Last I heard when I moved out, there were still activity because I still keep in contact with some of my neighbors. I had developed close relationships with some of them, especially the ones close to me, and to my knowledge, this thing still lurks around the neighborhood from time to time. To answer some of your questions, to my knowledge, it has never broken into anybody's house, although it has attempted. It's never attacked or hurt anybody, other than household pets. But it has scared the pants off many. The neighborhood kind of goes down on an unofficial lockdown at night, and really don't see anybody out after dark. 
It's strange because you can go a few neighborhoods over and people are out walking their dogs at night. But in the evening, not in this neighborhood. I'm glad to have been gone and honestly, I have no desire to ever return. I was up in the Pacific Northwest and hunting during doe season. I had my tree stand all set up and I got up there early as I could, waiting for deer. Luckily for me, I was on a friend's property in which he owned about 30 plus acres. I much preferred hunting on private property, so I didn't have to try and compete with a kill. What happened to me this day made me take a hiatus from deer hunting. So I'm sitting there, waiting in the stand, and I hear something big coming at me in the woods. My first instinct was that it was maybe a large buck, just because of the large sounds and how fast it was traveling. I looked off in the distance where the noise was coming from, and just out of the trees came this massive wolf-looking creature on all fours that just seemed to be passing by. It walked off up into this small hill and vanished again in the trees. I was speechless. I didn't know creatures like that existed out here in the woods of Oregon and decided it was time to hang things up for a while. Not my story, but a friend's information that I am sharing. I grew up and lived in Colorado for a long time before moving out of state. I have several close friends that are Arapaho and have a lot of stories about encounters with creatures they dealt with years back. Not they specifically, stories passed down from their tribe. I don't know if there are any other major native tribes other than the Arapaho that primarily lived in the Colorado region, but it's the only ones I'm aware of. Many probably know that the Rocky Mountains hold a lot of mysteries. Some of the stories that were shared with me was information dating back to the early 19 and 1800s. Fur trappers and tribesmen alike were captured and devoured alive by these werewolf creatures. I can't remember what the Arapaho called them, but they had a name for these things. Trying not to convolute the situation, these same werewolf-like creatures would wage war with these other beings that we know called Bigfoot. The Arapaho also had a name for them, but I can't remember that either. These werewolf creatures would storm into the villages at night, steal children, and smaller little kids. They were stealing these little children to eat. They would send the tribe warriors out to go hunt these creatures down. And when the tribesmen would find them, or what was left of them, it was just bones, far, far away in the nest of those creatures. Many tribesmen and fur trappers alike died at the hands of these beings. Bow and arrows and muzzle loaders were no match for a nine foot tall beast of the night with superhuman strength. Going back to the werewolf creature waging war with Bigfoot-like creatures, it was believed by my friend's tribe that they were waging war over who got to eat and prey upon the tribe. Many of the tribe's fiercest warriors at the time witnessed the battles between these two creatures, and oftentimes would result in either both creatures dying or leaving the battle severely injured. The creatures, not the warriors, my friend told me that his tribe describes these creatures as much taller and larger than some of their greatest warriors, and gray to dark gray in color. The Bigfoot-like beings of the tribe were talked about were also very hostile, and would come to capture and steal their women and children at night as well. It was a dangerous environment, and a constant territorial war between the Arapaho, Bigfoot, and Dogmen. There are different sectors of the Arapaho tribe, and one particular tribe, or village, moved around in fear that these creatures would keep stalking them. It became a relentless pursuit, until the village was successful in killing a small handful of these werewolf creatures, severing their heads, and putting them on spears, placing them all outside the village to ward off other dangers. Their claim was that these creatures lived in this large underground den deep in the mountain's side, that they would drag the captured children, women, and tribesmen to, and eat them. From what I was told, this den was never expunged because they couldn't match the firepower of these creatures, only ward them off from their own territory, which means that this den is probably alive and well today 
and is still very active from the sounds of all the other dogmen encounters in the state. I'm sure it is one of the many dens. Just the thought of that sends shivers down my spine. There's a couple times that tribesmen had ventured into this same den when there were no other dogmen in it, mainly during the day, and would find tons upon tons of human bones and skulls. I thought you might find these stories interesting. Feel free to share them with your audience if you would like to. One night, I got up from sleep and was leaving my bedroom to go get some water downstairs. I saw something behind the curtains in my living room that looked big and black. I could see the shape and it resembled a strange werewolf silhouette standing close by the door when suddenly it turned onto its hands on all fours and ran off towards my neighbor's house in the opposite direction. I was scared out of my mind just seeing this tall thing right outside my house. My curtains are so thin and the moon cast a perfect silhouette of this thing. I wanted to scream my lungs out. My neighbor is a strange guy who has been a paranormal researcher for years. I have never taken him seriously, but maybe I should. Although I don't think he will ever believe me if I told him a werewolf charged at his house. But there is no denying this creature really exists, and it scared the hell out of me. The next day while I was walking around the neighborhood, I saw strange shadows lurking around during my night walk gave me the creeps, so I came home early. I couldn't help but shake the feeling that these things are real. After I went back home, I kept thinking about it more and more, and finally said to myself, did, did I see a werewolf last night? And I went online to research it. There is a whole community of people online who share the same beliefs of having an actual werewolf sighting, which surprised me. A lot of people that claim they saw them with having near accurate descriptions as to what I saw that night. Now, there are so many places online where people like to talk about their encounters. Vitkundev's forum, website. I know about the North American Dogman Project. Your channel. There's so many. There's just something about watching a Dogman encounter on YouTube now that feels so validating. I feel like I'm not crazy. I know I may be older and getting gray, but I'm not insane. These things are real. I currently live in a small town called Alpine in Alaska. It's in the northern part of the state. You probably won't even find it on a map unless you zoom in with your phone. I've been out here for the past 12 years. I brought my family out here after the first couple of years working over at the oil refinery better known as the EOR, the Enhanced Oil Recovery. Unfortunately for me, there is absolutely nothing to see or do in Alpine, Alaska. It's just huge open flatlands. It's still beautiful in its own way, but to me, eh, it's not really my thing. But hey, the money's right, so I moved there. And the winters. God, that's a story in itself. Let's just say the winters are a negative 20 on a regular day. And that's if it's not snowing. But like I said, the money's good. Real good. Now, back to the story about last summer. My family, I, and a co-worker friend of mine, we decided to go camping, but the nearest woods were a pretty far distance away. So we all packed up in my SUV and we set sail on the road. It was around a 30 minute drive, give or take. I kinda baby my SUV. And plus we had a small camper in the back attached, so how fast did you expect me to go? Anyways, we eventually made it to Lost Alaskan RV Park, which is a place that we like to go to. One of the only places we can go to, at least. Anyways. We arrived in the afternoon. Due to the crazy time zone that we have with sunrise and sunset, even if the sun ever sets at all, it's different out here in Alaska. So we weren't really worried about getting there bright and early because it's bright and early most of the day anyways. I think it was about 3pm when we finally arrived at the RV park. We unloaded our things, pitched open the tents, grabbed the coolers, placed everything where they needed to be placed, and got going for a little grillage. 
It was time for a little early dinner before we got on a hike, before we decided to have some real drinks and real meat, if you know what I mean. Yes, I'm the man behind the grill. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? So we cracked open some husky IPAs, downed a few, ate some ribs that I put on the grill. Like I said, it's an early dinner snack. There's more to come. And we just talked and shoot the shit a little bit, you know. That's what we do when you go camping. You just get away for a while. Obviously, we didn't have the greatest phone reception, so luckily my son actually had to actually intertwine with us and enjoy himself. Or at least, pretend to enjoy himself, that was. He had just turned 13, so he's going through that early tween phase with this I'm too cool for my parents attitude. So I just let him be quiet, just sit in the corner and shut up. You see, that's how I think, but that's not how I do. Come on now, do you really want me to sleep on the couch? I don't think so. So, I just be on my best behavior, tell some ghost stories while I drink some brews with my buddy and my wife, and I periodically just try to get him involved somehow. Little turd. So now, it's around 7.30 and the sun is still beaming with plenty of life. Yeah, right. Anywhere else, it would have been pitch black. But not here. Not in Alpine. No, no, no. So we still had a few hours to expel before we had some type of twilight. So I proposed that we go on a nice hike. And to my surprise, they obliged. So, fast forward a couple of hours. This hike was beautiful. The pine trees, the grass, the open fields, the hills. I mean, everything about this hike was just stunning. But you know what, to be honest, that's about everywhere you go in Alaska. That's one of the true beauties about Alaska. Its breathtaking scenery is absolutely amazing. The bad thing about it is the whole night and day shift changes that people basically are not used to in the States. That and the winters. The winters here are absolutely brutal. But if you could get through that, it's a great place to be. We are known for our bears and wolves, but in this part of Alaska where we're currently at, we don't really come across too many bears, but definitely some wolves, big ones. So what happened that night was something I thought was something normal that turned into something horrific. We were currently walking back towards camp. The sun had already set. It was about midnight and it was dark. Finally. I swear, sometimes you just get sick of the sunlight. Anyways, as we were heading back, we started hearing things moving around in the bushes around us. The crazy thing was, is that it was coming from both directions, to the left and to the right of us. It was almost like there was two of them, whatever they were. At first, we thought maybe it was just some rodents or some small animals. I mean, not everything is big out here in Alaska. There's all types of wildlife out here. But when we started hearing the grunts and the groans and the growls, we knew we were dealing with something else. My son finally got with the program and grabbed my arm. He motioned to me that we need to run. My wife was already starting the speed walk as well as my friend. We started to pick up the pace at this point. We weren't running per se, just walking very fastly. I had a 38 on me, just in case. I mean, we're out here in the woods. It only makes sense. Plus, most people carry out here anyways. For some odd reason, I had the chilling feeling that we were being watched. That, and that this thing may have been following us for a lot longer than we let on to. Now I'm kind of giving myself a facepalm as to why I don't have a pit bull with me right now. Dogs sense things that humans don't. They hear things that we don't. And basically, sometimes they could see things that are not of this world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could say that I watch too many movies if you want to, but it's true. Whether you believe me or not, 
If we had a downright loyal family pit bull with us, this situation probably wouldn't have even occurred. Now, only a couple of us had flashlights. Half the time, we were waving them around as we heard things in the woods. Branches snapping, twigs being snapped. I mean, you name it. That and the grunts. Oh, God. Those grunting noises were horrifying. At some point, something was thrown right at us and it barely missed my head. It collapsed on the ground and bounced a couple times in the dirt in front of us. We all stopped in shock and examined what it was. It was a huge tree stump. This thing was at least 12 inches wide and about 40 inches long. It was big. I mean, I probably could have picked it up, but still, to be thrown like that from God knows where? No, no, no. This was no prank. This was something else. In the back of my mind, I was thinking it was a Bigfoot. You know, because there have been sightings about Bigfoots out here, and two, they're kind of known for throwing shit. But I was wrong. How was I wrong? Because soon, right after that thing was thrown at me, I heard its howls, and it sounded too close for comfort. The crazy thing was, those howls didn't sound like any type of coyote I've ever had interactions with, nor any wolves or wild dogs. This was something of pure evil. The tone of it was too deep. The bass, just everything about it was off. I told my family to run, and we booked it as fast as we could back down the dirt trail back to my SUV. As we ran, we could hear this thing grunting and growling in the background. It was definitely chasing us, and it wasn't too far behind. Maybe it was toying with us. I don't know, and I don't give a shit. Luckily, I had my keys on me. We left everything behind except for my SUV. We got in, strapped up, and we got the hell out of there ASAP. We came back in the morning, grabbed the rest of our things very cautiously, but we never went there to camp again. For context, I'm a 19 year old male living in Canada. This incident that I will be talking about happened last year, in September of 2019. Now, I haven't shared this incident with my family or even some of my friends, since they will say that it's a bunch of hogwash and that I was making it all up for the attention. So back to the incident at hand. At the time, I was doing a program in cadets, many called it the psych hike, where cadets would be sent deep into the woods and would be required to find a place to stay for roughly 50 minutes to an hour. Mind you, the psych hike occurred after 9 p.m., so we're pretty much sitting in the woods in the darkness with only starlight and moonlight. Another rule for the psych hike is that you are not allowed to talk or make any sound. Also, we are not allowed to walk to other cadets during the psych hike. It was roughly 8 p.m., the sun had already disappeared behind the horizon, leaving a reddish pink color in the sky. We were instructed to line up in alphabetical order. Then we were given two glow sticks. One was red and the other green. The red one was to only be used in emergencies and the green glow stick was supposed to be used for the all clear signal after the time was up. You were also given a whistle. It was also used to be in an emergency. So, after everybody's names were called, the supervisor asked any of the cadets participating if they would like to walk away now. One cadet, for privacy reasons, we will call him M, walked back to his cabin. The supervisor then told us to get behind him and follow him out to the campsite. I will explain the layout of the camp, as this will help the story make more sense. 
the cabins and the canteen are located at the center of the campsite. If you keep walking southward from the campsite for a mile, you would eventually reach an airfield. The airfield was surrounded by dense forest. Even in the daylight, it's hard for the sunlight to even get past the branches to the forest floor. Now, imagine the forest at nighttime. Daunting, right? Even the most brave captains wouldn't even venture into there. So, they decided to send us cadets in. Interesting. So, we were marched off to the airfield and were ordered to stand at the edge of the forest. And then, the supervisor started to send each cadet into the forest. We were told to only walk 25 paces into the woods. When it was my turn, I started walking into the forest. The only light source from where I was standing was the stars and moon, and even that wasn't even strong enough to light up my path. After 25 steps, I found a comfortable place to sit behind a tree. I sat down and listened to the cadets in front of me march off into the woods. As the last cadet marched into the woods, everything fell silent. The only sounds were a couple of the animals in the forest running around. I honestly had no idea what I was truly getting myself into, and thought this would just be an innocent experience that I could happily recount to friends and family. Boy, was I wrong. I think it was 15 minutes later when I heard a sound. Snapping. The sudden break in silence startled me. At first, I thought the time was up, and that the cadets before me were making their way back to the airfield. I checked my watch, but we were only a couple of minutes in, and that we still had a long time before the supervisor came and got us. Then, I heard it again, snapping. I looked around, but saw nothing. The moonlight illuminated only a bit of my surrounding. I could see only a couple of meters in front of me. For the next couple of minutes, I was fiddling with the glow sticks in my hand, until I heard this low rumbling noise. Within seconds, this low rumble turned into a very deep and guttural growl that sounded like it came from something very large with a massive, massive set of lungs. I was freaking out at that moment. I didn't know what to do. If I tried to run away, I worried that whatever was making the noise would appear and rush me and I'd never be seen again. Maybe that was my paranoia. Maybe that was my fear overtaking me. And then, it hit me. A scent of wet dog and rotting meat came wafting over to where I sat. When I smelt it, I retched and coughed a little. The smell was almost overbearing, so I held my nose tightly. Suddenly, in that moment, a feeling of dread and fear washed over me. I was suddenly paralyzed with fear. I started sweating, and my vision turned blurry. This is when the growling started to move around me, and not just stay stationary like before. It sounded demonic and raspy. It moved closer to me. I could hear it behind me. I was scared by this time, but I managed to look behind the tree. From the tree, at least 20 yards away, I could see a silhouette of something lumbering in the woods. It was tall, and when I mean tall, this thing had to be at least seven feet tall. It was radiating that horrid smell of blood, wet dog, and rotting meat. At first, I thought it was just a man, but when I looked closer, it clearly did not fit into the category of human. I guess the two cropped ears on top of its head gave that away rather quickly. Having hawks just like a dog does, with thick muscled legs and a torso, the size of a ripped weightlifter, this thing could tower over me, even from a distance. This thing looked like it could bench 300 no problem. It was covered in long dark gray fur from what I could see in the minimal light, and it had large hands that held onto the tree next to it that kind of resembled raccoon hands, but with long claws on the end of each fingertip. It was standing perfectly erect, puffing at its chest almost, but what really made my heart stop was its head. The head looked similar to a wolf, but its snout was long, full of teeth that stuck out of its snout 
just like a crocodile's does. Long, sharp, jagged teeth that didn't fit at all what a canine should have looked like. It had deep, sunken in eye sockets and a very strong brow bone. The eyes glowed a very dull yellow. It looked very unnatural. The entire thing looked incredibly evil, and just looking at this thing was paralyzing. The head was also humongous, like it wasn't proportionate to its body, either. I tried my best not to scream, fearing that I would draw unneeded attention. It stood there and continued to watch me closely, almost as if it was observing every move I was making, and eventually walked back into the darkness. When it walked back and was out of eyesight, I still kept silent, fearing it would still be able to hear me. I sat there in silence for a while, praying to God that whatever I had just seen wasn't planning on charging out of the woods at me to take me away. I wasn't even really sure what to do. I decided my best plan of attack was to just lie and wait for my supervisors to come back because I was far too afraid to get up and move. That thing couldn't be too far. And maybe, just maybe, it was waiting for me to get up and make a move so it could trap me. I didn't know what it was or what it was planning, but it just, it didn't feel right. I had to do my best not to have a literal mental breakdown right there on the spot. It's funny, you know, growing up as a kid, when you hear about things like this that look like this, you're always told, oh, those don't exist. That's only in your imagination. All that's doing is setting somebody up for when they actually have a true encounter with something that isn't supposed to exist out here. I wasn't prepared mentally in the slightest. I had no way to handle it properly, and I still don't. It seemed like forever until the supervisors finally came and picked us up. I didn't talk for the rest of the night. The supervisors tried to talk to me, but all I could really do was nod and shake my head to questions. I was too overtaken by complete fear to accurately even process their questions, let alone give them all the information they wanted out of me. I felt like a little kid who had just experienced a trauma or an abusive situation. My brain was still trying its hardest to process what had just happened. Is what happened to me reality, or did I just dream it all? Was the fear I experienced even real? Next morning in the cafeteria, I was talking to some of my friends about the psych hike when one of my friends asked, Hey, did any of you guys smell that last night? Everyone looked at him and started to talk about how they had smelled that horrible scent and felt the sense of dread and fear wash over them. I was the only one that was silent. When I went back home, I did some research and found nothing. Nothing concrete anyway. Everything led to creepypasta and scary stories, which is not what I'm about. I want to be taken seriously. I need somebody that I can talk to and tell my story. Desperate, I have now reached out to several people who are supposed researchers and investigators, hoping to get some potential answers. At least they believe my story, and I can have some resolve and ease of mind, knowing I'm not crazy. In a weird, morbid way, it's comforting to know that there are other people out there with experiences that closely resemble mine. What did I encounter that night? What was that thing in the woods that I saw? And I hope that I'll never see it again. I grew up on a small farm in Brownsville, Texas. You probably don't know where that is because it barely exists even on a map. It's at the very bottom of the state of Texas, right at the border of Mexico. There's really not too much going on down here. I mean, we have some typical crime just like any city, but outside of that, it's just land and country out here. But that's how the locals like it. Anyways, this happened last week. It's a true story. I swear to you, this is true. I was smoking a cigarette on my front porch, just admiring the sunset. We have about 10 acres worth of land. Now to some, that's not quite large, but to city folk, that's humongous. I'm not originally from out here, so to me, this was country. Anyways, I was just admiring the beauty, as I've only been down here for a few years. 
Now I know that there's no wolves, uh, but we do have our run-ins with occasional coyotes. But really not too much outside of that. The biggest problem we have is wild boars. Boy, we just hunt the shit out of those little boogers. Well, not all of them are quite small. Some of them are massive. Anyways, I was just smoking my cigarette, just chilling. The sun was just about to disappear over the horizon. It was starting to get dark. If you don't realize, Texas is just completely flat. Just open, flat land. You may come across some hills, but that's it. There's really no scenery with mountains, if that's what you're used to. I was just about to put out my cigarette and head back inside. When I saw it, there was this large beast that was running across the front of our field. It was pretty far out. I want to say maybe a good 40 yards. It was out there, but it was definitely big. You could just tell. It was hunched over like a hunchback, but it was running on its back legs like a man. But it wasn't a man. This thing looked like a dog, like a big black dog. Just imagine a super-sized German Shepherd that's pitch black running on its back legs like a man hunched over with elongated arms and giant looking claws. At first, I was pretty stunned as I wasn't really sure if I was seen what I was actually seen. It all happened so fast. It was like the snap of your fingers or if you just blinked, it was over. It happened that fast. I can't really explain anything else, but from what I saw, the only thing that makes any type of logical sense is that it was the dog man. I live in a small town at the northeastern corner of Texas. The town is called Texarkana, or a city for that matter. It's on the borderline of Arkansas. It's beautiful, but there's terribly not too much to do around here outside of camping or fishing or hiking and stuff like that. But a lot of times people just cross over the border to Arkansas to do all that. There's a little over 38,000 people in our town. So it's not quite large, but yet it's not terribly small either, if that makes any sense. Anyways, if you're from Arkansas or this part of Texas, then you know the legends. There's a lot of legends of this area, especially in Arkansas. They have a lot of myths. I don't know what it is with Arkansas, but they have their fair share of tales. I was out doing some fishing with my brother-in-law last spring. It was around 6 o'clock p.m. We were over at the Bringle Lake Park West. We had our mini cooler full of beer and we were just having a great time as it was the weekend. My brother-in-law was visiting from out of state and I work at the post office. It was a pretty quiet evening. Most of the other boats had already pulled back in. We were the last ones out there. We figured we would just give it another 20 or so minutes and then pull back in and take our winnings back to the truck and go home. It was starting to get dark and we were already riding back in to shore. That's when we heard the howls. The howling of something. <laughs> We thought maybe it was a coyote, but no. The tone of it was much too powerful and much too deep to be a coyote. Plus, coyotes run in packs, and they usually howl at the same time, so you always hear multiple howls at once. This was one long, deep, close howl. My brother-in-law just looked at me puzzled and asked, Do you guys have wolves out here? I told him, we used to have some, but it's been a long time since any of them have been seen in Texas. I doubt it. Then he asked me, then what the hell was that? I couldn't answer my brother-in-law, as I too was puzzled and had no idea. It could have been a wolf, but something was 
wrong about it. I just had a very bad feeling about it. As we were just about to pull in, we both saw this young looking doe running right in front of us to our left. It was pretty crazy because the tree line to the forest up ahead was about 10 yards away. I don't know why the doe was running out in the open right there by the water instead of being close in the trees where it's safer. That's when it happened. Out of nowhere, this large four and a half foot furry beast grabs the doe and runs into the wood line and disappearing within seconds. It all happened so fast. I almost fell on my ass in the boat just witnessing it. What the hell was that? My brother-in-law was screaming out loud to me. Eh, it looked like a gray wolf. I mean, that's what we used to have here. But no one's seen any in years. Yeah, well... Do your wolves walk on the back two legs like humans too? What the fuck, dude? No. No, they don't. That... was something else. Outside of being completely puzzled and terrified, we pulled our boat up, got our things, hooked everything back up to the trailer, and we got the hell out of there. I haven't been back there to go fishing since. I live in northern Texas, near the border of Oklahoma. It's very rural and woodsy out here, but that's the way I enjoy it. I've never been much for a city life. I was hiking with my dog. This is something that we do on a regular basis. About 30 minutes into the hike, it was nice and sunny out. It wasn't nighttime, it wasn't Halloween, nor was it a full moon, nothing spooky whatsoever. It was just a nice summer day. I had my ear pods on, listening to some tunes as we walked. Suddenly, I started hearing something through the music. Something that sounded like snapping branches. Something... Something close. I stopped and held my dog on his leash and took my pods out of my ear and back into my pocket. I just stood there in silence and waited. I didn't hear anything. Hmm, maybe it was just me. So I continued walking on the trail. A couple minutes later, I heard it again. This time, it was much closer. And this time, my dog noticed as well, as he started aggressively tugging at the leash, barking at something in the woods. I never seen him act like this before. Even with other dogs, he acts like he's a big tough guy, but he's really not. I didn't see anything in the woods. I was looking all around. I yanked my dog's leash and I tried to get him to turn around and start heading back home. It took some muscle, but eventually he obliged, still barking and tugging at his leash trying to attack god knows what in the woods nearby. I started to pick up the pace a little bit because I suddenly got chills down my spine. I suddenly had the eerie feeling that I was being watched. By who or what? I don't know. After a few minutes of hiking back down the hill, I suddenly heard some growling noises in the distance behind me somewhere. It did sound like it was a little ways away still. I can't really measure by sound how far away it was, but it wasn't right behind me. Thank God. I've never heard anything like that before, and it scared the bejeebies out of me. My dog and I hightailed it out of there as fast as we could. I was scared out of my mind after hearing God knows what was behind us. We made it home safely and unharmed. To this day, I don't know what the hell I heard. I spoke to a couple of my friends and their families about it. I wasn't expecting anyone to believe me, 
but one of my friend's family did. They told me they believe it was the dog man. I had an absolutely terrifying experience that happened to me just a few weeks ago on the night of the 4th of July. I had stayed at a friend's house since we were having a large 4th of July get together party. And because I had worked the next morning, I had to stay sober. Even though I did have a few drinks earlier on in the evening, I couldn't fully enjoy myself like I wanted to. I stopped drinking, probably about six, to allow my body to fully metabolize the alcohol. Around 10 or 11 p.m., after we hung out and did some fireworks, I decided it was time for me to go home. Quick note, my friend lives about two and a half hours away from me, and I only see him a few times a year. This was a long drive back to my house, but I pulled up good old Google Maps and decided I would take a detour through a really windy mountain pass kind of area. The good news is that with this route, I'd shave about 45 minutes off my overall trip. This area has sparse towns throughout and is very low population. Houses are very spread out and there are little to no lights at all. It's in the middle of nowhere and I've never driven it before, at least prior to this night. So I get on the road and as I get onto the highway, there must have been an accident because I was backed up for probably quite some time. I probably spent about 50 minutes in one spot waiting for traffic to clear. It didn't help me that everybody else was leaving their locations for the 4th of July, and so it was very backed up. What I assumed happened is that some go-happy drunkard probably hit somebody when they shouldn't have been driving. Driving by, I was right. It was an accident. Somebody had T-boned somebody else, but luckily, I saw no ambulances, so that was good. By the time I got past the wreck, it was a little after midnight, and I'm really starting to get exhausted and worried how I'm going to fully make the drive home. I'm usually an early bird, and I'm up by 5 or 6 in the morning, so you can imagine my utter exhaustion. I hate driving late at night for this reason. I regretted declining my friend's offer to stay and just drove home in the morning. Stupid me. I spend the next hour give or take on the highway until I get to the pull-off that Google is having me take. According to Google Maps, I had about 37 miles until I would pull out onto another road that would go for another 14 before I got back to my house. This road isn't an easy straight shot where you can just cruise at 60 and autopilot. There's lots of curves, hills, and blind spots. To make matters worse, I was literally fighting to keep my eyes open. I blasted music loud, I did everything I could just to keep myself awake and alert. I know deer love to jump out at this time of night, so that alone had me on edge. Once I made it around most of the curves which seemed to go on for an eternity, I had a portion of the road that was just gravel for a good two to three miles. I'm guessing it was road construction due to the bump signs, I'm assuming it was going on during the day. But if anybody knows anything about driving on gravel, it's that you have to drive around 10 to 15 miles an hour, or you can say goodbye to your tires. This is just even more painful because now it's going to take even longer and I'm already at my wit's end. There's no streetlights out here, no other cars on the road. I'm in the middle of nowhere, driving on this two lane gravel road. I finally reach the spot where the road goes back to normal. So I keep driving and driving. Finally, I get to a point where I realized if I continue to push myself, I'm going to cause an accident. I was on the verge of falling asleep at the wheel. I figured I might just pull over to the side of the road and sleep for about 5-6 to six hours, wake up in the morning and then go home, gather my things quickly and go to work. I set my alarm for 5.30 so I was going to be up and ready to go. Luckily, there is a pull out not too far from where I was. Again. It's pitch black, there are no other cars on the road, and there are no lights anywhere. I'm surrounded by fields and mountains all around me. For sleeping, it was wonderful, because it was so destimulating. I had pulled over into this little spot on the road, turned my truck off, and made sure my phone was charging. I reclined my driver's chair, and before I knew it, I'm lost in the land of sleep and slumber. This is where my story transforms from normal to what many would consider fiction. 
but this really did happen to me, and because of this, I will never go down that road again. So much for a shortcut, efficient shortcut I should say. I never in a million years would have considered the price tag that it had attached to it. For starters, I'm a fairly light sleeper, so it doesn't take a whole lot for me to be jolted awake. Do you know how it is when you're awakened when you're asleep, but your eyes are still closed but you become fully conscious of what's going on around you, like noises and such? Well, that would describe right now. Besides, it was so dark it's not like opening my eyes I could really see much. I woke up to a strange tapping on my driver's side window, but it wasn't like a person tapping their finger. It sounded like a rock or something being slowly tapped on the glass. There was no order to it or pattern. It was just random, and I woke up to this. I sat there for probably about five to seven seconds just listening intently to make sure I wasn't going crazy or still in a dream. I opened my eyes and reached down for my phone to turn the flashlight app on. I immediately shined it over at the driver's side window and screamed at what I saw. In turn, I dropped my phone. Pressed against my driver's side window, from the half second that my light reflected on its face, was a very angry dog or wolf, something. All I saw were the eyes, the face, and huge teeth, and it caused me to drop my phone. Now, I'm frantic. Besides the teeth, what terrified me the most, I think, was the intensity in its eyes, the expression and intelligence they held. In that flash of a half-second moment, my brain, for whatever reason, seemed to input everything it needed to fully register that this was a real being, a living creature. The second I saw its face, time had slowed down to a halt, and my brain supercharged, super-absorbed everything. I'll never forget the hateful expression it had on its face. I don't know if I parked in its territory or if its intentions were to come and hurt me and kill me. I don't know. I don't want to know. I've never felt such anger from eyes like that before. So I'm screaming and fumbling for my phone. I grab my phone, shun it to where I put my keys at while I'm going a million miles an hour. I never leave my keys in the ignition and I'm regretting that because this could have gotten into my truck. I put it in the ignition and I don't even waste a second throwing my truck in drive and pulling out of there at 60 miles an hour. I went so fast I knew I made a dust storm. The sheer amount of fear and adrenaline I had pumping through me brought me home in record time. I did more than that actually. I didn't sleep the entire night. I get home, get out of my truck, and I'm checking all around just to make sure that freak of nature wasn't following me, didn't hop in my truck bed or do any damage to my truck. I didn't even want to waste my mental energy trying to figure out what it was or what kind of animal it was. I didn't care. I was too terrified. I drive a larger truck that you have to climb up into, so it's not like some small dog that can easily just get on his hind legs and press his small face against the window. The head was huge and filled up almost my entire driver's side window. I don't know why it looked so angry, whatever it was. Its mouth was in an open position, kind of like it wanted me to see all of its teeth, which were oversized to begin with, and way, way too sharp to be a dog. Why was it tapping on my window? I have no idea, but I wasn't going to stay around for another second to find out. So, then the very next day, I call up my buddy, the same buddy who had the 4th of July party the previous day that I was just at. I told him about what happened and I said, man, you're not going to believe me, and he said try me. So I told him, and he went quiet, and said he's had a few other similar experiences over by the west coast. I think what you encountered is a dogman. I said, what the hell is a dogman? He began to explain to me that there are such things called cryptos and cryptids, Bigfoots being one of them. I stopped in mid-conversation, because I told him Bigfoots don't exist. I'm definitely not a believer in that nonsense, but this had changed my mind and my world. It made me realize there are things out there that force me to reconsider. I'm not saying Bigfoots are real, even as of now, but whatever it was outside of my truck that night, it certainly was real. So after our conversation and him going into detail 
about all the few times he's had weird feelings and experiences out in the woods on the coast. I begin to look around to see if there's any evidence I can find online of these things. That's when I stumble across multiple YouTube channels, and I got to read a variety of different eyewitness accounts. A lot of accounts seem to point to you and your YouTube, and you seem like a very credible individual to share my story with. I'm a diehard believer in science, actually, but the problem with science is that it does not explain what I saw. In fact, it flat out denies that it exists, and I can't wrap my brain around that. I know for a fact I was not hallucinating, especially considering that many of the accounts that I read nearly match the description of what I saw to a T. You can imagine how terrifying that is for somebody like me, who has that horrible face forever seared into my memory banks. I've had nightmares about it since, it pressing its face up against the glass and breaking into my house and eating me. It's pretty horrifying, and I'm not going to lie, it's like I had a monster step off Hollywood and stand right next to my truck. I don't know how long it had been standing there, and I don't know if it would have opened my door had I left it unlocked. Those are things that are best left not thought about, because if I dwell on them too long, I will get terrible anxiety. This happened to me last weekend. I'm born and bred in Waco, Texas, which is south of Fort Worth. North, technically central, but look it up if you don't know where it's at. It was a Saturday afternoon, late afternoon if I could recall correctly. I was out by myself on a hike over at Woodway Park. I've been there plenty of times, it's one of my favorite places to go hiking. Anyways, I was alone this day. Typically, I hike alone, unless I have someone to accompany me, but usually I don't. I was just enjoying nature and the good weather before it starts to get too hot. I don't really care for the heat too much, yet I don't care for the winter either. I don't know, I guess I'm just hard-headed. So, I was about two or three hours into my hike. I mean, when I go hiking, I mean, I go hiking. I don't just stroll around the block and then call it quits. When I go hiking, it's an all-day affair. I absolutely love it. I always have my walking stick and a packed lunch with plenty of water. This time, I had forgotten my walking stick. But luckily, there's plenty of tree branches and fallen twigs that I could use that worked perfectly fine. The sun was getting ready to set. It was this that hour, I guess. I decided to start turning around and start heading back, just to be safe, as I knew I had ventured off a little farther than I usually do. Somewhere on my walk back, I started hearing something moving in the distance. I couldn't tell if it was behind me or somewhere off to my left. Something was definitely following me, though, because I heard it more than one time. At first, I just brushed it off. Maybe it was a doe. Maybe it was a, just a rodent or something. But the second time, it was even louder. And I knew it was no doe. Maybe it was a wild boar. I mean, they're everywhere, and they're big too, and their presence is easily noticeable. I started to walk a little bit faster, just in case if it wasn't. I know what you're thinking. Are you just scared of some piggies? No. If you're not from Texas, then you probably just don't understand. These wild boars are fierce. They can be deadly. And they could get massive too in size. I knew I shouldn't have had that hummus, because not only was I speed walking, trying to get back to the parking lot because of whatever the hell was following me, but I had to take a shit too. Normally, I would just find somewhere out in the woods privately, even though there's nobody else on this trail. Whatever this thing was, I just, I didn't trust it. I just kept going, pinching the whole way. That's when I heard the howling. This time, it sounded like it was right behind me.
It scared the living daylights out of me. I twisted around and jumped so fast, and in doing so, I had an accident. That was least of my worries. I was threatened for my life. I didn't see no figure, but I did see something that was far out in the distance behind me when I turned around. It was those eyes. God. There was something hiding behind some trees. Something dark. Something big. Its eyes were glowing red and seemed like they were directly staring at me. This was pretty far out in the brush and the woods and I could barely see any type of silhouette. Whatever it was was black as midnight. But again, those eyes. God, those eyes. I turned around and hightailed it out of the woods as fast as possible, praying to God that whatever that freak show thing was in the distance wouldn't chase me down. By the looks of it, the thing was probably just as large as I was, but it was no man. I made it out of there in one piece without any harm, but to this day, I've never been back since. I live about 30 minutes north of El Paso, Texas, which is in the western part of the state. There's really not too much going on here, as it is primarily desert, but that's the way it is here, it's always been that way. Anyways, I was out with a couple of my buddies on our quads. We had an RV and we were just doing some off-roading, that's what we usually do in the summertime. Fast forward to that evening. We had built this huge bonfire out in the dirt, and we were cooking up a shitload of food on the grill. The bonfire was absolutely massive. We brought a couple of pallets and broke them down into pieces and made this fire very spectacular. We were having a blast. We were having kind of just like a bros party. There was no chicks with us, it was just us guys. After a couple 24 packs later and a shitload of carne asada in our bellies, we started telling some drunkenly scary stories around the fire pit. Not everybody wanted to get involved, but everybody sat back and drank and enjoyed the night. I happened to be last that night, and I was about halfway through with one of my juicy tales that I do. And then all of a sudden, we all heard the howls. The howls of... At first we thought it was coyotes, but then realized we were way wrong, dead wrong. When the howls first came, we thought nothing of it. Hell, we even started howling with them in the distance, <coughs> drunkenly. But when we got a response... That's when I almost shit my pants. And I shit you not. After we heard that howl of whatever that beast thing was, we saw something large and black running across behind our RV. We all saw it. It wanted to be seen. This thing ran on its back legs and it was hunched over and periodically tapped on its front arms, paws, I don't know. It was almost like it was galloping. This thing had a human shape, but it was more like a giant dog. Almost like a, a werewolf or something. I don't know. It had black fur and its eyes were reflecting by the moonlight. It moved so incredibly fast. It was like the snap of your fingers, and the damn thing dis disappeared. We were all pretty freaked the hell out, and we all agreed that we were not going to be staying the night. We packed up all of our crap back onto the truck in the RV, keeping the fire pit lit because we were thinking maybe that was the only thing that was keeping that thing away from us at the time. 
we left within an hour after seeing whatever the hell that was. And we never went back there to play with our quads again.